Ladies and gentlemen, we... That was a lovely voice break. What a fucking start that is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially back. Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and you're very welcome back to another episode of the Premier League Verdict for Season 6. We back, baby! I know I was saying I didn't want the World Cup to end and the Premier League to come back, and that is true, but I have missed this series. And if you guys have to, slap a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, once again, really appreciate all the support on the channel. As of recently, shout out to the brand new subscribers that have come in in the last month. It's been incredible, so thank you guys so much for all the support and all the love. And, uh... Yeah, I think we're just about ready to get into this. Now, because it's been so incredibly long, let me just reiterate the rules of how this series works, okay? So we have our graphic up in front of us. The green box is for the performer of the week. Once again, this could go to uh, any number of things from ranging from a team to a player to a moment, anything like that. Best moment to anything like that. Green box just is good, very good. Very nice. Goes in there. Yellow box is our shocking wow moment of the week. Again, could be any number of things from a, an absolute howler from a Chelsea goalkeeper or a defender to a ridiculous moment, whether that be just like absolutely crazy good, crazy bad, a brilliant goal, anything like that goes into this box. And our red box, as you can probably figure, is our stinker of the week. If you've had an absolute shitter of a moment or a game or just anything in general, once again, goes into that box. We all caught up. We know what we're doing. Brilliant. So let's start off with our green box then, as usual, and um, I'm going to give it to Newcastle United, who went up to second in the Premier League table, thanks to a 3-0 win over Leicester City at the King Power Stadium, and a thoroughly, thoroughly dominant performance and victory from um, Eddie Howe's side, and I think a big question that a lot of people asked was, after the World Cup break, would Newcastle be able to maintain the kind of momentum that they had gathered up until that point, and they're probably one of those teams that didn't want the World Cup to come in that regard because they were in such good form and they were absolutely flying going into the break. Well, they've certainly started back on the right foot. A 3-0 victory, like I said, against Leicester City. A very Brexit-esque penalty. Let's try saying that 10 times fast. A Brexit-esque penalty by Chris Wood making it 1-0 to Newcastle. A fantastic goal from arguably one of the players of the season, not only just for Newcastle, but in general, Miguel Almiron, still thriving off those Jack Grealish comments. Brilliant goal by him to make it 2-0. 2-0 up after only 7 minutes, and Joel Linton made it 3 going into half time with a powerful header and that was essentially game over I mean Leicester had a couple of chances here and there had a show for a penalty denied as well but Newcastle honest to god it's the, you know the race for the top four is always an incredibly tight one anyway because quite often you have very very competitive teams over the last couple of years it's been the likes of Tottenham Arsenal, Chelsea, uh, Man United, Liverpool sometimes to an extent as well. But Newcastle have just absolutely propelled themselves into that conversation. And uh, I think for the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool, who started off the season very, very poorly indeed and are now playing catch-up, it's going to be very, very difficult to get into the top four. I mean, it's like I say, it's very difficult to get into it every season. But now you've just added an extra team in on top of that. Do you know what I mean? So I think Newcastle will be there or thereabouts, absolutely. You never really know what's going to happen second half of the season. But if Newcastle continue this kind of form and this kind of momentum, they are going to be right up there. And I can see a decent uh, spending spree happening in January as well. Wouldn't be surprised to see one or two fresh faces walk through the door at St. James's Park also. But Newcastle get the green box on our return to the Premier League verdict. Yellow box then, and I'm going to go for a, a crazy couple of minutes at Selhurst Park. A crazy game in general because Fulham absolutely smashed Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. A 3-0 victory thanks to goals from Bobby De Cordova reed Tim Ream and Alexander Mitrovic. I mean, an incredible performance by Fulham, who have started off this season absolutely incredibly. I think a lot of credit has to go to the manager, Marco Silva, and the way these players have been able to adapt to each other. I mean, a lot of new faces in the door, as Fulham seem to do. It seems to be a common theme, but then when they get back promoted to the Premier League, and more often than not, they never really mix very well at all. But that is couldn't be any further from the truth with, with Fulham this season so far, I think it's fair to say. But uh, the crazy moments come, and I'm going to put Tyreek Mitchell and James Tompkins in the box for two red cards for Crystal Palace. I mean, they were they were in the game. They had a couple of chances up until these moments, but the game completely got away from them after that. Fulham were already 1-0 up uh, when the two boys got sent off, but they went on, obviously, to make it three, thanks to Reem and Mitrovic. And can I just say, I don't think, really, I think they were very harsh red cards, if I'm being honest. Tyreek Mitchell, I can't remember, it looked like a straight red to me. I could be wrong. For a late-ish challenge, 
um, towards the, the end of the first half, about 10 minutes left in the first half when that happened. And James Tompkins, who was already booked, does something kind of silly, to be honest, just kind of throws his arm out and Mitrovic runs into it. And uh, it, it's very rarely, you know, not going to be given. But talk about how that changed the course of the game. I think Fulham were probably well in charge in the game anyway. But my God, it is an absolutely disastrous 20-odd minutes if you want to count them all up in total for, for Crystal Palace in that game. And it was the inciting incident in the game that completely and ultimately allowed the game to get away from them. Thrashing, an absolute thrashing. It's very rare. You see many people go to, to many teams go to Crystal Palace and absolutely thrash them. And uh, let alone a team like Fulham, who on paper should be fairly even. It's a victory that sees Fulham stay in the Premier League's top 10. And I'm very, very intrigued to see if the Fulham go board give Marco Silva, you know, freedom to bring new faces in in January like they did in the summer. Because if they do, I mean, Fulham could be well up there come the end of the season because they have been very, very impressive so far and probably exceeded a lot of people's expectations on the returns of the Premier League. So they deserve a lot of credit. But yeah, a couple of moments of madness really let the game get away from Crystal Palace. Stinker of the week then. Uh, I'm going to give it to... I'm going to throw Frank Lampard in there. And I'm going to throw Everton just behind them. Just like a little badge thing. Looks kind of nice on the graphics. So we're going to throw it in there. Everton are a club that have been an absolute stable of the, the Premier League. I think one of the few sides to never ever get relegated. I think we say this about them quite a lot. But once again it looks like they're going to have a relegation scrap on their hands. Towards the, the second half of the season. And this latest defeat. Definitely a fucking tough one to take. So they're playing Wolves at Goodison Park. Uh, I think I think it was on Boxing Day or Saint, I mean St. Stephen's Day as I call it here or we call it here in Ireland so I mean if you're if you hear me calling it St. Stephen's Day fixtures I'm sorry and cry more. But Yerry Mina gave them the lead uh, after just seven minutes and it looked like the perfect start the perfect return after the World Cup for Everton but I really I have to say one of the goals of the season in terms of how it was created from Daniel Podence I mean that ball from João Moutinho is first class. I mean, a ridiculous loopy ball into the box. Podence really, really calm and composed and controlled finish into the bottom corner past uh, Jordan Pickford. And, you know, what? what is most heartbreaking about this is the fact that Everton lost it in the 95th minute thanks to uh, Ryan 8 Nuri. And just a, a really poor goal to concede on the counter-attack at that late stage of the game. I get Everton were chasing a winner, of course they were, but there's got to be a certain amount of professionalism involved and concentration when it gets to that point. Like, in the way the game went, I think Everton probably should have been happy enough with a point in the end, but ultimately, they ended up coming out with nothing thanks to that goal from Aitnuri. Nuri. And um, I do think Frank Lampard's on thin ice. I mean, I'm hearing rumours that, you know, no matter what, Frank will end up staying at Everton. Um, but again, they just seem to be in this kind of time warp where they cannot get out of these relegate these consistent relegation scraps um, every single season and it's got to get to a point for Everton fans where they just don't take this anymore because Everton are a fucking massive club and ultimately should at least be in the top 10 if not competing for Europe that's you know the kind of stature of club you're looking at there and you know again we're talking about Everton possibly by the end of the season just surviving by the skin of their teeth it'll be interesting to see if Frank Lampard is kept in the job for the second half of the season but uh yeah no apart from that lads let me know what you think uh, on the boxes in the comment section down below it's good to be back it's really nice to be back and if this is my last video of 2022 obviously we will have the uh, the end of year compilation as we always do but uh, if this is the actual last video i probably will upload a couple of shorts as well let's be honest this isn't the last video but you know it's up there um once again thank you guys so much for the incredible support um, on the channel in 2022 the best year we've had on YouTube so far so honestly I couldn't be more grateful to you guys and you already know we're, we're up we're, we're up on things in 2023 we're upgrading massively so just expect that expect better videos higher quality videos hopefully more collabs as well with some um, creators from the Irish community I'd love to connect with but um, yeah anyway rambling on uh, let me know what you think in the comments section down below leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you are new and I will catch you later